Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome to everybody I see there in the chat. Thank you, members, too, who are here as well. Always great to see you there in the chat. Welcome, everybody. I'm Natalie, and this is Scientology Life After a Cult. Well, you will catch me recapping Scientology news in the mornings, but I also get to do interviews with people in the ex-Scientology community. Sometimes it's an ex-Scientologist. Somebody, it's, sometimes it's somebody protesting. You just never know. You never know, which is why you want to hit that subscribe button and then hit the notification bell because I'll pop in here and there with that uh, let's call it bonus content <laughs> outside of my recaps. But truthfully, it is one of my favorite things to do is to find out more about the different people that I meet and that you guys are getting to know through YouTube, right? Many of them, we might see them out protesting and live streaming and have so many questions about them, what inspired them to do it, where they came from, all of that. And I enjoy finding that out. And I hope that you guys do too, because I'm going to keep doing these plus I love it. Thank you so much to my mods that are helping out today. I know Nancy's there and my Tony as well. If you have questions as we go along, put question in all caps, have your question follow, and we'll try and get to as many of those as we can because I have so many questions, you guys, and I think you're going to have many questions too on this topic because today we're going to be talking to somebody who did the training, who did the deeds, and has the tea. He's going to be talking about what happened during some Scientology training that he did to make him a very specialized Scientology in interrogator. And we're going to get into a little bit of that. And you've heard us often talking in the X community about certain techniques that Scientology uses to manipulate people. And uh, we're going to get a little bit into the weeds on that because I have questions about it because it was done to me as well. And it's going to be really cool to be able to talk to somebody who understands it and actually was trained to do it so that we can break it apart. And you can really take a look at how insidious Scientology is and how it can be used to harm people. Not that you didn't already know or think that, right? This is just more of that information to give us more of an understanding of what Scientology is and why it's so important to put a stop to this human trafficking cult. So without further ado, I do believe I've covered all my housekeeping points. I want to bring up to the main stage, everybody, welcome Louis Repetto. Yay! Thank, thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. You're so Ooh. wonderful. I watch you all the time. Big fan. <laughs> See, I tell everybody that comes on to start with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we patter drilled it first in the beginning. Yeah. We Chinese. We did a what do you do drill on it. <laughs> oh, my God. I <laughs> forgot about those. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it is so great to finally meet you. I've been following your channel. I love when you did those mock e-meter things. Thank you. We got to see you again when um, Aaron from Growing Up in Scientology went to LA and you were there as well and were able to protest with the crew. Exciting. That was so fun. Aaron is so amazing when I met him again from having, haven't had seen him in like 20 years, you know, from in the Sea Org. And uh, he was just uh, so smiling and helpful for with me when I was talking to people who had never been in and he would just help answer questions. It was just what it was wonderful being there protesting. And then he was so brave to bring that package to security. I would have never done that. I was kind of freaked out, you know, Me neither. I, I thought for sure it was going to get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> but do you love so. to the way the security guard just hands off it? He didn't even flinch. Cause I know when I was in PAC in LA and had to cover reception a few times, we were trained to never accept anything. Yes. It could be a, it could be a, it could be something, mm -hmm. you know, real bad supposedly because the, the enemies, they want to hurt Scientology. So exactly. they want to destroy them. That's what they're all afraid of. But the truth is they it was process servers. That's what they were trying to avoid. That's oh, what they didn't want us to accept. So I was, didn't know. Yeah, it was peppered with a little bit of this, you know, people could be send us things that are harmful, accept nothing. Just accept nothing. And then we drill oh. accepting nothing at reception and then accept nothing. And sometimes that still I'll get a little triggered. I actually had this happen recently where I had gotten some certified mail. And my, I, in fact, I almost went into the position of accept nothing. <laughs> then I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a fine, normal thing. Business things sometimes get sent that way to make sure you get it. <laughs> That's fascinating. Look, there, when you do get mail in the church, though, I know that they go through it 
and scan it all first and the computer goes through and recognizes what's good and bad they have like a a machine in div one when i was there wow this is see i i've been out of the sea work for 30 years so this is new to me you're saying they had they use some type of ai no they just use a scanner and the scanner just scans it the mail yeah, but all the mail they, they open up all the mail i yeah. remember gabrielle in div one Mm -hmm. He had this huge machine on, I was on a desk and it would just go through there and he would occasionally see some N theta. So yeah. he'd see Xenu occasionally and he'd throw that into a bin. Mm. But most of the time, if there was something bad on it, the computer would recognize it. That's what he told me. Wow. And I've seen that the thing. That's interesting. <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't know how it works exactly, but um, I don't know. Go ahead, Tan Natalie. I'm just rambling now. No, that's totally that's totally crazy. I'm just that was so like that was after my time. I was a public person. I was a member still in Scientology, but would not have known about anything like that. And the everyday Scientologist does not know that. Yeah. So look, I just want to tell you, like, I was the how I know this is I used to audit the staff members, mm. and there's I used to do these PTS interviews, and one of the questions is, have you run across any negative information regarding Scientology mm. and Gabrielle's answer was this mail that he found in, in mm -hmm. the when he goes through all the mail he said he normally the scanners catch it that's what he said normally the scanners catch it but I saw it and it was uh, had to do with Xenu and when I wrote it down on the worksheets and then I typed it into the computer security came to me within one hour and said, there's something on your computer that you need to erase right now. And I had to go to my computer, like somehow they had detected on the in intranet of a computer systems there that it was written in a report. <gasps> and so I had to go there and delete it and they didn't say why or anything. You know, and I got to sign lower conditions. I so didn't even guy, know why. So this what? is the guy who told you this, this is what happened to him. He got to sign lower conditions. I got assigned lower condition because I wrote the report on Gabrielle and I included in the report typed in the computer Xenu, the word Xenu. Oh, you did. Uh, I wrote the report on Gabrielle's interview from yeah. having interviewed him about his connections to suppressives. He yeah. told me about this mail thing. I wrote it in the computer and then yeah. security came to me. Mm -hmm. Incom security, not just any security. The, the top security guys that watch Incom nonstop. And those guys are real scary, you know, and they, they never talk to you and they're just always doing uh, their security stuff. Wow, that is crazy. I've actually, I can't, re I don't recall hearing that, that they, that, I mean, I know they went through the mail, but that's a really good point because you can't have the average Sea Org member going through the mail who doesn't know about the upper levels. Yeah. And, and there are hardly any Sea Org members who've done the upper levels in Scientology. Exactly. Exactly. They're, they're all, all the ones that are way up high are, are either in RTC <clears throat> and super controlled mm -hmm. or they're really old and they're being abused, you know, elderly abused. Like, for example, um, Number of names. I don't know if I should be naming names. I th I don't remember what you said about that in the beginning. Oh no, you can <clears throat> you can name names. You can say what you want. I just, my whole thing is just try not to swear. <laughs> I won't swear. I'm getting I'll sick of hearing about the swearing from YouTube. <laughs> <clears throat> Margie Esterman, she is probably in her 80s. Um, when I talked to Jerry Owen, who I knew mm -hmm. in the Sea Org, just a yes. few days. So at the local St. Louis org, mm -hmm. he told me that Margie Esterman is still working. How, wow. how can that be? She was, she was, she had had multiple strokes and she had so many situations where her medical bills were not being, she was not being taken care of medically and yet she's still working. Wow. She's in her eighties now. Like that was what? When I was there a long time ago, it was 10 years ago. And yeah, I knew her when she was already in her 70s. Wow. Yeah, that is the thing. They would have to hold on to, kind of to your point earlier, Sea Org members who were even elderly, especially if they did any of the upper levels in Scientology. <clears throat> when you were, now Lewis, you were in the Sea Organization 
And you guys, Lewis did what's through um, a class six. So like a level six auditor training and case supervisor training. That is a very, very trained Scientologist, let alone C organization member. So you'd be able to do things in the C organization on the bridge to total freedom. <laughs> you can see it on there. It's like halfway. If you can see behind me, the bridge is the top there and the very top, and it's about yeah. halfway. But the six other class levels of auditor training that are above it, they're all having to do with the operating Thetan levels mm -hmm. and such things. So <clears throat> um, you have to have special clearances to get yeah. <laughs> special, yes. special. Special, special. So you do this training and part of your job was to audit or um, to use the security checks interrogating C organization members. And I want to get a little bit into that because you often hear, we hear about it on the receiving end, somebody who had been interrogated, gotten these interrogations. And when I was in the Sea Org, and refused to end my pregnancy. My husband at the time and I wanted our baby. And there was a lot of coercion. We were being come at hard to not follow through with the pregnancy. And we refused. So I was going to be sent, I was sent to a smaller Scientology organization in Seattle. But while I was there, they did a, a process on me called rollback. And I know you know how to do that. And I wanted to just get into that a little bit because it was some of like a, my the way I recall it, and you know, my daughter's now, this was 33 years ago. <laughs> I don't remember it exactly, but it was along the lines of trying to find out where I got the idea that it was okay to be pregnant. And I remember it being rollback because I think they said something about start of rollback, I'm, but I'm not positive. Does that sound familiar? It was like who, it sounded almost like an interrogatory where it was, who said it, what was said, but it would, but the questions were a little different. So you simply tell me. Put, simply put, there's a reference in every book and then every library in the world, supposedly, called the ethics book, Scientology ethic book, ethics book. There's a reference in there called ethics officer's character. And there it says, the ethics officer puts the person on the e-meter and asks him who gave him the idea to X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And then you s trace it back. Uh, and then you go to the next person and trace it back and you go to the next person, and trace it back until you find the source, which is supposed to be a suppressive person. This rollback technique thing is supposed to be about influencing people's minds. So you're supposed to ask them questions like, has anyone ever told you that you should leave the Sea Org and have a family? Has anyone suggested that family is OK to you? Has anyone said to you that you should um, go have a family outside the Sea Org? Is it more important? Has anyone pushed on you that Scientology is less important than um, living in the messed universe? Wow. And that's matter, energy, space, and time. It's like pretty much mm -hmm. the real world. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, the real world, as we call it, for sure. So you ask them questions like that, but you've you have to make up the question in regards to the situation. So you're just trying to find out who has been talking to with or starting a whispering campaign mm -hmm. in regards to something. Because a lot of times on these um, abortion evolutions, I call them, a, well, we, we called them inside the Sea Org, the abortion evolutions. And they would happen every two or three years. Wait. So it happened in 98, happened in 2001, it happened in 2003. I was there for the 2001, 2003. There was one in 2007. There's one in 2009. There's one in 2012 and 13. These, they, every few years, the um, people get pregnant in order yeah. to leave. Yeah. And then that's, it would, yeah, they do I a whole rollback investigation each new time in order to find the suppressives oh, pushing so this idea. So they're so trying to you, find not only a suppressive within the organization, but a suppressive yeah. that is connected to a WOG or a Neverin who's influencing the Sea Org church. And then that is getting into the Sea Org. You're trying to find that person to, influence. to go and fair game that person. Yeah. Let me understand this, though. When you say evolution, do you mean it was, was it something they routinely did or just only did when somebody, when a Sea Organization member 
was pregnant and wanting to keep the child. An evolution is when there are multiple people involved. Mm -hmm. So it's how they're dealing with something. So okay, um, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. like one sad evolution. Person, that like yes, no, but that's like one day. This is over a period of months. Okay, this is like that, a few months at a time. They call them like these different evolutions. They uh the they had this one 2001 where this mission fired in, and they called mm -hmm. that the um external influence mission, and it was uh, an evolution about external influences. Yeah, they did that a few times, even back in my day. And for those that don't know or might be confused, that's to find out what is the influence that's coming in from the outside. Therefore, it's external. And that's the rollback trying to find that. That's trying what the rollback's trying to find. Because look, at in this course, this super secret course that I did, and I had to get super approvals from, and get I had to get my own security checks just to do the course. Mm -hmm. And I had to do it in a special place, and I had to sign this NDA, you know, for like 200 million dollars or whatever two hundred thousand dollars if i said anything about what's in it and then when i had it i had it in a briefcase which was connected to my belt and then i had to lock it into a locker it was like they made this thing in my mind like this super confidential stuff and inside of it l ron hubbard details how the jfk assassination occurred he says that what happened is these people went into a bar and these two fbi agents and they roused up or influenced the shooter and mm -hmm. then that was like one example and there's all these different things about how to question people to find all these external influences in the suppressive person and then what do you do with the suppressive person you put their head on a pike that's what you do he yeah, uses so exactly. much violence you know when in yeah. his like little analogies it's weird yeah it is weird so this is just, it blows my mind because even though, and, and this is a, another way of also sharing that in Scientology, many things are compartmentalized. You don't know what the other people are doing and you're not allowed to discuss what you're doing if you're doing a level that's confidential or you're involved in a project that is confidential and people shouldn't know about. So you had to go through your own security checks to even qualify to do this program and do the training. And yeah. in the training and only on that training, because this is the first time that I can re recall hearing that there was an L. Ron Hubbard conspiracy theory about what happened with the assassination of JFK. And you're saying oh. that yeah, it's in a manual of justice, I believe. I mean, I'm that might be on the internet. It's yeah. an article that L. Ron Hubbard wrote um, that was con sealed as confidential and put on the rollback course. It's a, like a nine pages and it talks about different ways in the, the co in our society how these different events were are shaped by these suppressives influencing people to do things so he's saying l ron hubbard said in this confidential pack in this confidential binder yeah that it was two it was a couple government agency officials fbi went in, agents fbi agents went into a bar yep and, roused up whatever his name is the guy who wonder. shot yeah who yes shot john f mm -hmm. kennedy yeah. Lee yeah. Harvey Oswald. Yes. And they convinced him. Was it like a one day thing or did they work on him for a while? It was one, one or two paragraphs in there. You know, that's how L. Ron Hubbard is. He'll just give you one or yeah, two snippets or something. And now you have to like imagine it all. It's, but so all he said in there is these two FBI agents went into um, the bar and then talked about um, like got him riled up and made the enemy JFK made oh. the enemy JFK or who, are, yeah, that's interesting. We're there. And that's we're all. there. Like, that's all I know. That's all he said about it. It was just like, boom, just here's this. It little was like snippet. two paragraphs. I'm sure a uh, Mike Rinder probably has that on his thumbnail drive. Wow. Were there any other conspiracy <laughs> theories in there that L. Ron Hubbard had about things that had happened at that time? There's a lot of conspiracy theories theories about uh that he has ones like he had he these are just his past lives so i mean i mean he, yeah. one is one of his past lives has to do with uh, in the egyptian times there was a person with a ray gun that was seen underneath their cloak that That's l ron hubbard l ron hubbard said that in a past life of his 
he witnessed an Egyptian with a, a ray gun from like an advanced yes, civilization. civilization under his cloak. Okay. Yeah. There was this in a lecture. You know, you just, you hear it and it's like gone. Yeah. And then he's back to talking about objectives. And you're like, come on, man. Mm -hmm. Give me the stuff about the ray gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is, you are correct <laughs> about that. And I'd kind of forgotten about that. He would be talking about a particular subject, especially in a lecture, where much of the materials that were studied, especially on the confidential levels, were from lectures that he did, or then he sat down and wrote them. Yeah. Is how he would pepper in these little bits of pieces about history and what happened and his own conspiracy theories about things. But the, I feel like the best ones <laughs> were in those confidential levels. All right. So I'm going to ask you, but first I'm going to say, Winston Smith, thank you so much for uh, gifting five Scientology thank life you. after a cult membership. Oh, I wish I was in there. I tried <laughs> to figure out how to do that. <laughs> you might Go be ahead. in there. You might be in there. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how they're gifted, how that's done, but I think it's absolutely I'll figure fabulous. It out. Yeah, and I appreciate it. Okay, so on also on this, you said there are pages and pages of it. And yeah. these are just a couple examples, which I mean, two is even that's a lot, but you're saying are where there are more examples in there in these confidential materials where L. Ron Hubbard shared either his past lives or conspiracy theories that he had about the world outside. I feel like there are many. I can't tune into any at this moment. Sure. Yeah. Um, it was nine pages. Uh, we're talking about rollback. Yeah. Uh, and he's trying to explain how this works and get yeah. these real examples so that, you know, you think it's real life. Yeah. Okay. And make it all fancy. You know, he, he wants to add some flair to his little, little how to dominate an individual the, the thing about the rollback is you're supposed to get in a floating needle at least at the very end. You know, well, you're, you're trying to accomplish what you're trying to do in the rollback interview is not just find out where they to who told you, but also educate the person into what an enemy line is and to convince them that what they've been told is an enemy line. So they believe this and have a relief about it. Ah, and how would you define, could you give an example of an enemy line or describe what in the Scientology sense that means? L. Ron Hubbard is a science fiction writer. Is the actual line he gives inside his reference on what the enemy line is. Mm -hmm. A good enemy line would be, it's better to, it's better to go on vacation for four days than it is to go on liberty for one day right. every now and then. So that's kind of an enemy line because the going on the four day LOA, you're promoting that they should leave and take a vacation. So yeah. that's enemy against the Sea Org because that's you're externally influencing. Yeah. So they would, something would happen with an individual within the Sea Organization where they would get in some type of ethics trouble. And as part of them being in trouble and trying to find out where and like whether it was, let's say, a C organization member like like for me who became pregnant, a married couple in the C organization is pregnant, which is against the rules. Yeah. So where and did you get the idea to get pregnant? Exactly. So that's what they ask you. And they use these manipulative techniques because yeah, they that's believe. Just the interview. Go, sorry, yeah. go ahead. And because they believe that if they trace it back, so then if if the pregnant C organization member says, oh, because I saw Jill over here and Jill was pregnant and she seemed happy, you're saying they would then go to Jill and do the same thing. Where did you get the idea <laughs> or yes. where did you see or who said that it was okay to have a child in the C organization? That Then on top of that, in addition to the rollback interview, I would write a report on you, Natalie, if I did it on you. And then I would write that Jill was in the report. That report, you would be seen by the ethics officer on that report. So your rollback doesn't just end there. So now you have to do a whole ethics program where you have to read references, where L. Ron Hubbard talks about what these enemy lines are, and then you have to get false data stripping. And you have to strip off any reason why you would not believe that this is an enemy line. So you, yeah. 
and then you have to do your condition so that you can be free from these enemy lines that you have been forwarding because forwarding an enemy line to another person is destruction and is a lower yeah. condition assignment. Definitely. So you would do these rollbacks of Sea Org members for whatever reason it was that they got in trouble. And then you would be, you would have to write reports on what you found out. Yes. Every single rollback gets a report written on it, typed, and then it gets put in their, both their ethics file and mm -hmm. it gets put, uh, sent to the international management, whatever management is near you. So it can go into their computerized data files. Wow. Mm-hmm. So then I, I get how then this works as not just investigation for the Sea Org to find out where these Sea Org members are getting these crazy ideas that it'd be great to have a family or it'd be great to take mm -hmm. time off or it would be yes. great to do anything except the Sea Org. Mm -hmm. They're being interrogated using this technique. It's almost like, it. you know what it reminds me of is when people talk about the... Uh, the in the 50s where like everyone was a nazi if you somebody you had a disagreement with them <laughs> you know it, it it just keeps going back to well who are they hanging out with who do they know and that is very much it seems the scientology role in it as well and then when they're being handled on it afterwards let's talk a little bit about false data stripping and what that is and how it's used as a te technique to manipulate the scientologists into thinking their idea of having a family freedom and conversation and going to a movie is such a horrific idea. False data stripping is when what L. Ron Hubbard is saying, you have one idea and another idea, and then they get mixed into one, a new idea in order to make them work. And he says, these, this is the false data. And before you can get the false data stripping in, um, a non session, but you can also yeah. do false data stripping in real session and they find what led up to agreeing with the false data in the first place. Okay. So that's in the session though. That's where you handle evil intentions and overts and withholds that's preceded the false data that you received mm -hmm. supposedly the false data. Yeah. So you do like an education step regarding whatever subject it is first mm -hmm. to get the true data then you get asked and the true data well, i'm assuming mm -hmm. is going to be something coming from l ron hubbard that source that source yes. yeah that source so hey you don't you know no one messes with that <laughs> even cob he promotes himself as being on source you know that's why it's so hard for us to understand from the outside looking in how can these people trust him when we see he's off source yeah. and they see him as on source. Yeah. And I'm really, in fact, neuropsych just asked a question that really made me think of something. Are they, are they making disbelieve what you did believe? And that, that's yes. what they're doing. Yes, exactly. So exactly. Yes. And that can apply not only to data, but it can also apply to personalities, attributes, attitudes, valences, mm -hmm. which are identities. So you, you believed you were one way before and you, they can strip this off you as not believing it now. Exactly. Because it needs to be replaced by whatever the source, whatever L. Ron Hubbard said, whatever Scientology wants you to believe, like they want you to accept that having children is not something a Sea Org member should want or do. Yeah. So what would be the reference regarding that? Um, let's, let's think of a reference where L. Ron Hubbard uh, said you shouldn't have a baby and leave the Sea Org. Essentially. I don't think he ever did because that really came out after he. There's a reference. It's in there the chat. It, there's a book called A Eight O Eight, and oh, yeah. in there is a chapter on vacation, and in there he says how it's low toned, and things like that to go on vacation. Yeah, to go on vacation. So basically, it says that in there. So it means you're, and for those who don't know, low tone in Scientology just means like your low vibe, like your vibe yeah. is really low. Your, your low vibe, you need to be more up here. <laughs> yeah. Another thing is in expanded Dianetics, mm -hmm. there are uh, examples of where L. Ron Hubbard is doing case supervising. Mm -hmm. And the situations are when the executives have a um, something that is making them think about the outside world, the wog world, he calls it. 
Yeah. And then he has an exact program of auditing of false data stripping and sec checking to get the person to get their attention off the wog world and back onto their bridge, which is Scientology. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and they were Sea Org members. And they were Sea Org members. Yeah. And this is done as well to people who are members of Scientology and not in the Sea Organization. I mean, the public are subjected to this as well at times. So it's not limited to Sea Organization members, but it says a lot about why in Scientology and especially in the Sea Organization, you don't want them watching television or reading newspapers or magazine or being on the internet, having any way to be introduced to any type of outside influence. And mm -hmm. if they are, this yeah. is the handling. This is what will be yeah. done to them. So people who are watching here in the chat, if you're catching this on the replay and you hear us say all the time that, oh, if I did that, I would be put into re what we now today call reprogram reprogramming. Mm -hmm. If I did that, oh, I would yeah. get in trouble and have to do these interrogations. This is what we're talking about right now. This is what will be done. And it's so insidious because it strips you of basically your will, your choice, and instead puts in what L. Ron Hubbard said and what Scientology wants as being the true, the true thing that you should believe. I, you know, it's crazy because like I know this and I even had it done to me, but talking to you and having that other point of view of it, I'm just like, holy crap, <laughs> what uh, a cult. <laughs> it's such a cult, right? It's yeah. crazy. I didn't going, even know it. I no, going through it. it, I just thought even when I had rollback after I'd gotten pregnant and I was just, and I don't even remember what answer I gave because I didn't have an answer that really made sense because it doesn't make sense to think that way. But they, you really get to see how, how they're so keeping Scientology in line and the Scientologists and keeping those blinders on. Because the, these interrogations yeah. aren't just questioning you. They're actually manipulating a person's adjusting mind. It. Adjusting it. Exactly. Talk suggesting a little bit more, it, Anna. Sorry. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about that, like how these techniques result in someone being, you know, just that, right? They have their Here own it is. idea. Yeah. False data. So you get the vacation reference out. You have them re read that by L. Ron Hubbard. Then you say, is there anything regarding this that you can't think with? And they go, oh, I, I just, I can't think with the, yeah, there is. Okay. Have you been given any false data regarding this? And then the person has to answer that question. They know that they're, they're yeah. drilled into, you know, you have to answer it. Otherwise you won't, have a floating needle at the examiner, you'll be red tagged. And that's a whole situation that that goes over. And also, you know, you can't leave. It's like so many things. Yeah. Yeah. So then in the end, the result is a Scientologist who is now operating off of the L. Ron Hubbard point of view or established rules or way of thinking that they're thinking that way. Oh man, it is so it go when you when you really lay it out like that, it is you really realize it. Yeah, it really they shows have have a floating you. needle. Wow. Yeah. They have to feel like they they have to feel the M phenomena in order yeah. to get past this. They have to feel almost like it was like, oh, oh, how oh. did I ever think that? You're right. You're right. Yeah. Oh, vacation is oh, that's so but they can't fake it. Funny. You can't yeah. fake it. If, if you believe in the e-meter at that point, yeah. if you believe the meter is going to yeah. know what you're thinking, kind of, mm -hmm. then you can't really fake it. You have to kind of convince yourself, like buy into it. Yeah. I think that's part yeah. of it. No, I think it's totally part of it. Betsy, you did a little super sticker for you. Loved your mock e-meter videos. Oh, thank but you so much. Yeah, they were, I just was, I had wanted to do it for so long and I kept thinking about it so I just did it one day like three in a row and I was just so over it I was like uh, I can't even watch these yeah. <laughs> I did like uh so you know oh my gosh I no, was kind I of stimulated yeah you got you got triggered capital one call out thank you so much for gifting that membership hip hip hooray thank you what were we talking Under about false data stripping yeah false data stripping okay. Yeah, false data stripping. Um, 
Neuropsych has a question. Have you had any, have you had therapy or anything to help you get out of that mindset? I've had the WOG world. Um, the, yeah. Not the and WOG we, world. And the mass we, universe. we try not to use the W word too. Yes. It's a, sorry. It's a word to many. The outside yeah. world, the non-scientologists. <laughs> um, yeah. The uh, mess universe, I would say, is, has been the best, best therapy. Uh, Doing but, like uh, physical things. Just, um, it's been like being out in heaven, to be honest with you. Not leaving the Sea Org and coming into the real world and experiencing yeah. actual life <laughs> mm -hmm. has been like nothing I could have ever imagined. And it's been heaven and it's been a total vacation you know, mm -hmm. for me. <laughs> I know. I remember when I was first introduced to the 40 hour work week, I was like, what? What do you yeah. mean? I could just get even to work is fun. Even uh, work is fun compared to working in a cult, mm -hmm. you know? That's like true. I was just, I dreaded having to do these rollback interviews because you knew when I did them, I they had to be videoed. You know, religious technology was going to be watching. Typically, these evolutions are run by religious technology center when they yeah. when they have all of these um, uh, abortion evolutions or when leaving staff are leaving. Yeah. In parades, um, they have the RTC will run a program through the commoners messenger org and they will run that through senior HCO onto the orgs, which is security essentially. So security is doing all these rollbacks mm -hmm. on you. You know, that's physical security. The physical security people, they're the ones doing the rollback on you. You know, they're the ones that are keeping you not, you're not allowed to stay up past midnight and th they walk around the buildings and they write you up, you know, and you get in trouble. They're the ones that are circling around the building and watching you if you go off the base they're you know they're watching you in every single hallway there's cameras and the smoke detectors and they're also the ones with the e-meters doing these rollbacks to find out who gave you the idea natalie that you can just go off and be happy with children and love bodies yeah who gave you that stupid idea that's so <laughs> dumb uh, Debbie with an I has a question. Since they don't want Sea Org to have babies, does Cult of Scientology supply birth control to married couples? Not when I was there. Tell me, Louis, do you know when you were there? We would take them because I was the staff section officer. So I was over the medical liaison officer, which is mm -hmm. the person that takes the Sea Org members to their doctor's appointments, etc. There's a Planned Parenthood that we would just use and it was always free. So would people be sent to the Planned Parenthood or would Sea Org members go get those supplies and then distribute them to other Sea Org members? Oh, I get what you're saying. No, they would have to go to the Planned Parenthood themselves. And the Planned Parenthood was right down the street from PAC. So mm -hmm. it was like mm -hmm. two or three blocks. They had to, you're not allowed to leave the base unless it's in pairs of three. You have to get approval through your local ethics officer and security of the base has to know you're going. So you have to call in advance and make sure they know so that they know to tell the persons on the physical security that they don't have to stop you from leaving. Wow. And you yeah. have to and they, I've been stopped many times. Wow. In my, in my day, and we established that, like I was in the Sea Org 30 years ago. It was mm -hmm. just two. So when I went to Planned Parenthood, which is when a friend took me to get my pregnancy test, <clears throat> it was the two of us. But well, I remember, impossible. yeah, I would just go across the street and stuff. I didn't have to be with somebody. But the, more recently, you were there, and that's crazy that it was three people. Mm -hmm. Winston Smith sent you over a super sticker. Ryan Boswell did, uh, was a head of security pack at the time, and he had a big base briefing, and he announced it was three people. A group is three people because Ellen Hubbard says no, because this is all based on Ellen Hubbard. Yeah. Not, but they didn't just make this stuff up. This is all L. Ron Hubbard's security ideas. You cannot be out unless you're in a um, a group. And then they defined it, three people. Three, three people. people. What yes. if you and, wanted and, to, and, you were able to, like during your cleaning time, run over, run a couple blocks away to, I yes, remember there was a store there, like a dollar store or something. Yeah. You had to have three people. If there was across the, like if it was within... The camera view, mm -hmm. um, 
you could do it. But I only thought the cameras could go only go as far as you could see, like as far as you could see a store. Yeah. So I'd go ac across there like on break, and that was probably 75 feet. Oh, 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 so you're saying as long as you were in view of the security cameras, you that could I thought. go. Yes. Yeah, if you could, and the George's General Store that I could see, yeah. that was about 75 feet away, and there was a mm -hmm. 99 cent store that you could go to. There was a restaurant around the corner that they could not see, and I used to sneak over there. Yeah. And they had security come over, Roy Rodriguez come over to there, and stand out there with a, his bi on his bicycle until I came out, and then he brought me back. Wow, well, yeah, I, that happens a lot. Wow, that is just crazy. I'm going to grab a couple more questions and comments here. Pippi Longstocking forever. LRH was well versed in despicable mind control techniques. It is scary that an organization inflicts that on people. It sure is. <laughs> Um, someone's asking as well, mind wipe. What's the difference between a KR and rollback? Rollback is the interview itself. I put someone on the cans. They're holding the cans. I have the e-meter. I'm asking them the questions. They are answering and I'm writing down the information. Then I end the interview. Then I write after that, I either handwrite it on a carbon copied paper or I type it into the computer, a report, it says at the top of it, knowledge report. And at the top, I say where it goes to, the person's file, plus I carbon copy multiple executives regarding it. Mm -hmm. Then I write time, place, form, and event in the report. And then I put, this is true, Louis Repetto, and the date. And then I mail it off or send it off or whatever. Wow. Yeah, in my day, I don't remember... Uh too many computers i guess it depended on what your job i mean there was when you you know it was the internal telex thing and all that but i'm just oh, fascinated yeah. still by what you shared earlier that if you put the word xenu into a seaorg computer that mm -hmm. the income and income in the seaorg is they're a high up organization that handles computers and you know the whole setup for technology for scientology for the base there yeah and they showed up at your desk <laughs> they showed up. I was freaked out. Did you need to do out. so? What <laughs> okay? So, you a report was written on you for writing the word Xenu and then putting it into the computer. You had no idea what that was. You I didn't know about it. I still didn't know for years. Yeah, because it came <laughs> up and somebody said the word to you when you, when you were doing this rollback on them. Mm -hmm. So, you, you had heard it. So you didn't know what that was until you left the C organization. And when you found out what Xeno was, what did you think about that? I couldn't make sense of it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, um, I could not, I couldn't, I could, yes, make sense of the Xenu story as an implant because I had heard of crazier implants. Yeah. And, and can you briefly the Hill explain special it? briefing course, which is yeah. all about implants. The whole course is pretty much about implants and so there are many implants so z knew the whole story that never Wait, lewis can you explain though can you give a simple explanation for what an implant is implant is simply a pain uh a painful experience for a soul when they are trapped inside some kind of a machine um and this machine uses electricity or uh, and fire or whatever it can to make the person subdued and then uh, the <clears throat> machine puts these pictures into the person's it puts them up project, projects them typically on a screen to make these pictures think uh, of false deaths that the person mm. had and then that confuses them more the soul <clears throat> and then the machine says, or the implant, meaning the pictures that they're putting up on the screen, also putting it inside this soul, mm -hmm. is that you, they should be a body. They should eat. They should believe in God. Um, these kinds of things. And so this implant can occur in a few days. It can occur over a few years. 
And there's a whole bunch of these implants on the whole track, which is all of your lives that you've lived before this current life. So it goes back to like trillions, 10 to trillions to the power of 10. Mm -hmm. So when I had heard about Xenu being only like 76 million years ago, I thought, well, that's not that big a deal because I already, I, I'm not non, I know all the non-confidential stuff. And then there, there's earlier implants way earlier than that. Yeah. And implants, was that something, I don't remember this exactly, that primarily happened, <clears throat> the Scientology belief is it primarily happens between lives. Like you, you die, you go, your soul, you, the spirit, the being, the Thetan goes to the implant, reports to the implant station <clears throat> and is reprogrammed to go back down to earth. For a while, yes. For a while, the implants that was happening that way on this planet when you would die you would report back to jupiter or whatever planet had the implant station on it mm -hmm. and then they'd re-implant you and be, you'd be sent back here and then he also says that there came a point where people were just self-implanting and so they didn't need to report back they were just wiping their own memories and staying here says that on the briefing course. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. These are things that the average Scientologist, just so all you guys who are here with us now are watching on the replay, the average Scientologist doesn't know a lot of this because you have to go through a very specific training that it kind of similar to the upper, the upper operating Thetan levels, which I've done most of, but not all, but, but Lou here did the opposite side of the bridge to total freedom and yeah. has that whole other perspective. So there's things that I learned on my side that you wouldn't have known as a Scientologist at the time. And there's yeah. a bunch on my side that I wouldn't have known of what you did because I didn't do that training and wasn't given the authorization to receive that information. So yeah. it is just crazy to put it all together and understand too that many of these techniques, in fact, all of them that you were trained in has to do with controlling Scientologists. Like if a, Sci if a Sea Org member looks and saw that billboard and went, oh my goodness, there's help to get me out of the Sea Org. Why? Let's say they weren't even thinking too much about leaving. Why would I need help to get out of the Sea Org? And it might start some questioning. That staff member then gets in trouble and then would be sent to somebody like what Lou used to do, who would then get that procedure of rollback. Where did you get the idea, right, that it would be mm -hmm. good to leave the Sea Org or whatever? And then they would be interrogated to this false data stripping to strip away any idea they might have that they should have the freedom to leave and make their own choice. And only when they are reprogrammed back to, no, I'm in the Sea Org, I stay in the Sea Org, that's what I'm supposed to do are they allowed out of that whole process, right? That kind of like pull that all together. That's kind of how it goes. Yes. You're the master. That was My excellent. Way. That was like, that huh. is crazy town, right? Yeah, totally. So Completely. manipulative. Like, yeah. And that's an, what's an, happening. A, an incredible scale. Mm -hmm. Any Sea Org member that saw. Ellen Hubbard before. even says that. He says, like about the Incredibles, people don't believe things that are incredible because they're incredible. And yeah, he talks about this. He says the enemies are doing it, but mm. really they're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's the crazy thing. He does talk about that. It's so nice. Yeah. Well, Lewis, we have to do this again because there are a yeah. whole other sets of topics and things about the Scientology technology. And I want to be able to break it down for people in because we kind of throw out there reprogramming, mind control, but now we're going to get into what that actually is and what it looks like, and then even get furthermore into how we came out of that, because it's been different for, I know when I ask people about that story, so you and I will do this again soon. I want to pull up, everybody make sure you head over to Leaving Scientology, St. Louis Scientology Audit. You're also going to see Lewis outside the St. Louis organization doing his own Scientology Audit and protesting Scientology. He's got great videos already about it on his channel, including an incredibly enlightening chat he had with a Scientologist and Sea Org member. So there's going to be more of that. So anything you want to add before, anything you'd like to say before we end off? <laughs> you were so great, Natalie. 
it was so wonderful talking to you about all these different aspects. I feel like we could just go into such yeah. details. It would be like, no, we will. <laughs> we absolutely yeah. will. We totally will. Cause there's so much to talk about, about it. So yeah, every anytime time you need a filler, I'll jump in. I'll be ready. That's awesome. You need somebody in the beginning of that 20 minute interview, like with good. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll jump in. I love it. That's great. We are going to do this again. Like I said, he and I are going to set up another time. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe. Make sure you yeah. subscribe to leaving Scientology, St. Louis Scientology audit, subscribe to my channel, hit your notification bell. So hopefully you get a notification when we do this next, do it on both channels. That way you'll be covered and hopefully know for sure. And be sure to hit that like button on the, on your way out, whichever channel you are on. Appreciate everybody being here. You, Lewis, as well. Hold tight for just a second. And everybody, you know the drill. Get out there and have the most amazing cult-free day. Hip, hooray. Yeah. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs>